everybody. Hi. How's it going? Very good. I, I watched your movie last night. You guys bought me a burger. Nice. I loved it. You guys sent us a Postmates code. It was fantastic. <laughs> Dinner and a movie. Yes, exactly. Well, you know, there have been so many great coming out stories. You know, even was just the, this wait, year. Wait, was the burger good? Oh, it was so good. It was okay, good. Okay, good. good. Yeah. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. And now I made everybody want a burger. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, there's so many great coming out stories this year, you know, just this year alone, Love, Victor, the upcoming movie, a holiday movie, The Happiest Season. What did you both feel was unique about Uncle Frank's story that you want, that made you feel it should be told? Uh, I think for me, what's unique about it is that it's, it's, it's sort of both a road movie and a coming of age movie and a coming out story <laughs> all at the same time. And it's also about, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how old you are. It's never too late to, uh, to make peace with uh, your past and to embrace uh, your fully authentic self. It's not something that has to be accomplished in your twenties. It can happen, you know, in your mid forties uh, or even after. Um, so uh, I guess that's for me, what maybe would be unique about this particular movie. Oh, well, Paul, it's such a beautiful part. What did you think when you got the script? Um, lo I, I thought lots of things. I, I thought, um, I had an email that set up, there was a script that Alan Paul had written and wanted to direct and he wanted me to, to be the leading actor in it. And uh, that made me really excited. Uh, and that, cause I'm a big Alan Ball fan. And then I thought, wait, what if I get the one shit Alan Ball script? And, uh, and, and oh, there's, you know, there's more than one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. And then I, um, and then it was sort of like opening a present in front of somebody. Cause I knew I would have to respond to him, you know, and like, oh God, I hope I like it. Uh, socks that's great but um they they, 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 they I, lo I loved it and i thought that it was it was brilliantly written with eminently sayable dialogue which believe me isn't always the case but the but also the the it was constructed so beautifully and the the um that there is a there is a turn in the third act that I think is really exquisite, where you where the audience believes that they've understood the nature of uh, of of uh, Frank's guilt, and then uh, but then the 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 truth of it all comes out, and the sort of the narrative catch up is impact of that is like a gut punch, and I I just I just loved it, and then I got on the phone with him, and I. I, I sort of I, I, I fell in I fell in love with Alan immediately, and we both had really similar um, ideas about what we, we what we wanted to do with it. So those were my initial thoughts. And also, is it okay that I am in it? And and is there a is there a good is there a, a compelling reason for for for, for to, to, for Alan to choose me, and we talked a lot about that, and um, um, we came up with some pretty good, pretty good reasons that I should do it. And I, um, and then, I, and then we had a hell of a time. It was, it was a really wonderful. It was a really, really wonderful time. It really was. Well, also, I have to ask. You know, uh, Alan, you have a very long, a big history in the television space. Paul, you're about to get into it in a big way. Uh, what are both your thoughts on WandaVision and Marvel finally coming into the TV space? Well, well I, I think... can't wait for it personally. I'm really looking forward to seeing it because Paul told me uh, about it and it just sounds like such a smart, fresh take on, on that particular universe. So I'm, I'm psyched. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's going to be, um, it's, uh, it's really, it's a big swing, you know? I mean, I think it's easy to, misremember uh it was a really big swing when kevin feige picked um you know uh 
you know, when, when I'm, it's, it's, it's easy, it's easy to forget how mad an idea it was to cast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I mean, as Tony Stark, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that, I think it's easy to misremember that. And they, they, they have, um, they've made some pretty big swings uh, in their time. And this is massive. It's bonkers. It's, the the the, the it's, it's a great it's a really crazy idea but Jack Schaefer wrote it and it, it really holds water and is really about something um you know kind of kind of kind of beautiful and um so I'm, I'm really excited for people to see it well it looks like you're having a great 2020 Paul you know what? <laughs> well, well, at least career-wise. <laughs> you say that. These, these were actually made in 2019. I mean, my 2020 has been kind of crappy like everybody else's. Uh, um, but um, uh, yeah, I, I can't wait for 2020 to just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to celebrate so hard uh, New Year's. Just goodbye, 2020. Totally enough. <laughs> I'm getting kicked out, but Alan, what's that dog's name? Gigi. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Gigi, you hear, you heard your name? Oh. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're talking about you. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> Wonderful film. Take care. Thank you, Grace. Peter, your character in this movie is the nicest person. When I finished it, I was like, if anyone could find someone who loves them as much as this, they will yeah. be lucky indeed. Exactly. I totally agree. You look so different, though. I do. do I'm a chameleon. I'm a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did you come up with Wally's look? You look so different. Um, you know, I, I, how, I mean, just by research, you know, looking at pictures from the seventies, look at the gay culture in the seventies and reading some books and whatnot, you start sort of constructing the character, not just like the emotional inner life, as well as the physical and how they look and how they take care of themselves. So that was part of it. Yeah. Uh, Sophia, Sophia is fantastic. Sophia, there's there's a joke in the movie where a woman says that she can relate to Frank because her hairdresser's gay. But <laughs> as your character shows, women and gay men have a much stronger, deeper, and more important bond. What do you think Uncle Frank means to Beth? Um, I think, well, Uncle Frank um, is a mentor to Beth she he he's someone that she desperately wants to be he's the one who got out who went to new york and he's living his life and she feels like he's the only one who can really talk to her like a person and we cannot talk to her like an adult and no one else really uh, takes her seriously at home so she feels like i want to be exactly like him i want to be the person to get out and go into uh, nyu and just be and be live my life and she does that because she has uncle frank uh with her she feels strong with him around um in the end she becomes almost a mentor and him the mentee mentee oh, i like that that's true um, that's kind of flip. That's when she cool. when she's the one, she basically says the exact same thing that he does when she was young um and in that case she helps him and that, that relationship is, uh, I, I really loved it and really loved that kind of switch where she become more stronger, more confident person. And she doesn't become Uncle Frank. She becomes someone different. She becomes herself, but a better version of herself. Aw. Well, I love your road trip section of the movie, uh, you know, mm -hmm. filming on the road. Did you have any actual road trip experiences? Yeah. Like as people, as no, like uh, off camera. Did you guys go get some fun food? Did you visit anywhere? Sophia, did you? Did I? <laughs> it's been so long. Everything I know, I'm trying before to COVID is like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. You were outside. Didn't... I was outside. I moved around. Like, to restaurant. <laughs> talked to people. Um, no, yeah, I probably did. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> Well, I have, what, what did you, did you do anything, Peter? Yeah, I think like going to Mexico, what, isn't that a road trip? If you take the car? Oh, I, well, I, in this movie, like when you were filming it, was it fun in that lo location and doing oh, stuff like that? Oh, that's what you mean in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was fun, you know what? Because we were in a car and we got to see the landscape and uh, we shot in Wilmington, North Carolina. 
uh, and the movie takes place in South Carolina. So the landscape is very similar. Uh, so that was great because it really is very different. I mean, I live in Los Angeles and it's nothing like that. So that was pretty cool. And it did feel like a road trip because there were so many scenes and so many takes. So we, we hung out a lot in the car. Did you really get ice cream at that stand? Yeah, of that course. Functioning ice cream stand? I mean, not from the stand, from the prop guy, but yes. <laughs> Sophia and I were like gulping down our ice cream and, you know, staining our clothes and the customer was like going crazy. I mean, it was great. <laughs> After like 40 takes, we did yeah. absolutely did not um, get sick of ice cream. Yes, exactly. Why would we? Uh, it's great. Same flavor every time. Yeah. Of, uh, you know, it starts melting with the to. weather and it was, mm. it, it's tricky to deal with. Well, so great. Yeah, the last thing I want to ask is you made such a big, well-deserved splash with it. And you've taken off like a rocket. You're doing so many exciting projects. What's it like carving out a career for yourself in Hollywood? Uh, I'm glad I have a lot of help. Uh, I have a whole team and whatnot. I got my mom there. Uh, without her and without them, I would not have gone in this far. <laughs> still shocked. Still, still, still surprised where I am at right now. And. Uh, the thing with um, this industry, you never know what's going to happen in 10 years or five years. You know, it, you could have like have an amazing streak and then not get anything for the next two years or so. I mean, like it's it's you can't like you, you can't like just think, oh, in two years, I'm going to have this many jobs and it's going to be great. But that's what I love about this uh, industry. And it, it's it's great. It's unpredictable. And it's you can like it's. You know, you, suddenly you get a job and you can go to England and you can travel and meet new people. I'm probably not now. Um, <laughs> never mind. Uh, but I had something to say and I don't remember. Yes, I am really shocked that I'm here right now. And I'm glad um, that I feel like I can do something with this. Uh, I, I want to continue acting right now. I don't know if I'm going to want to act in five years. I don't know. Uh, but... Right now, I, I, yeah, you're right. I, it's great. What a sophisticated answer. I can see why you're doing so well. You're, you're very smart. And I think the family angle is so perfect with this movie. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I think that's really nice. I loved it. Thank you both. Thank you, Grace. Hello. Hi. So you both play family members in the 1970s with a closeted gay member. What was it like going back in time when people knew so little about the gay community? Well, I was around then, so I don't know about all this talk about going back in time. But you kids, you <laughs> kids can talk about that. <clears throat> I was like, remember, this that. What was it like back then? <laughs> Were you very familiar with the gay community or did you draw back on what it was like? I was familiar with it, but uh, it's true that there has been progress since the 70s of acceptance and of um, not being a, this, this story would have been harder then, yes, less believable perhaps, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Pope Francis recently stated that LGBT couples should be able to be uh, legally married because everyone deserves to have a family. Uh, what do you think of how far the church has come? Because religion causes a lot of pain in this movie and yeah. complications. I'm so happy about that statement. Really happy about it. Uh, I love you. Remember years ago when he said, who am I to judge? Yeah. <laughs> My I God. know I'm really into the Pope. Um, <laughs> this current Pope. I was raised Catholic and I never thought I would see this day. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. And I know that, you know, on the coasts, there's not always as many religious people, but in the middle of our country, like it's, uh, it makes a really big difference when you have like the leader of, of, a, of the Catholic church mm -hmm. saying that it's time and that is huge. Mm -hmm. Well, the message of the film was so beautiful and it really is a very nice family that you depict deep down. Uh, what do you hope that people take away from this film? You know, without any spoilers, what do you hope that they? Hmm. Lois? Be, be, 
becoming kinder, more accepting. Hope so. Yes. Yeah. It seems like the best way to go. Seems like we all could use a lot of kindness right now. <laughs> it's a good time for a movie like that to come out um, and acceptance. Well, Judy, everyone is so excited about Halloween Kills. Yeah, me and too. <laughs> And everybody, we have to wait a whole whole other year. Can I you know. give us any teases to hold us over? No way. They will kill me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like Blumhouse will find a way to come into my home right now. No. Um, no, but I will say that it is like, I haven't seen the movie, but David Gordon Green told me it is incredible and I know that he wrote and directed it so maybe of course he's going to say that but he's a very honest person and I am really I'm excited that they haven't shown it to me yet because I do have a big mouth um so it's probably for the best but <laughs> Lois you have a movie on hold as well because of the pandemic the French Dispatch. <laughs> yes how was yes. it working with Wes Anderson oh just yeah. marvelous <laughs> really we all went to France together and uh and it, it's it was wonderful but I mean I've admired the movies but it's a he's one of a kind it's a different way of making movies it's so inclusive so unique but but also um available it, it, lovely really lovely fun well, I loved Uncle Frank I thought you both did a wonderful job and it was a touching film oh thanks Thank Grace thanks Grace Thank you.